around your object and you want to snap to a view, you want to hold shift. So if you, if you kind of rotate around, uh, let me open up another character so it's a little bit clearer to see. So let's say we'll grab Zachary's uh, model from last year. It's going to take a second to load, I think. So yeah, when ZBrush does quick saves and, and uh, a quick save uh, for you, it will um, sort of, you know, uh, save it as a Z project. But if you're wanting to snap to, let's say, a Maya style orthographic meaning non-perspective viewport, you left click and drag. As you're left click and dragging, you hold shift. It'll snap. So it'll snap views. A lot of times if I'm making trimming, so let's say I want to flatten the, the bottom of this bust, I will turn off perspective so I get a nice clean uh, orthographic view. And I might try something like the trim curve, a control shift, click and drag. Uh, this thing has subdivisions. So I will mention this. This is something that is hard to get your head around sometimes in ZBrush. It will limit certain functions based on whether you have subdivisions or not. In this case, I can't cut the model because it has subdivisions. So I, you either have to freeze. Generally speaking, I don't like freezing. I usually will either delete my lower or do something a little different. I'm going to just delete lower in this case for uh, the speed of this example and then slice this off. Because I was in perspective, or sorry, I was out of perspective, I now get a clean, flat surface on the bottom of that bust, which looks a lot better, right, for presentation purposes. So, um, like I said, basically holding shift. So as you click and drag or pen down and drag, you hold shift, it'll snap to views. If you need to rotate, sometimes you need to rotate, click and drag. Uh, sorry, shift, click and drag, and then let go, and then shift again. So it's uh, hold shift, click, let go of shift, and you got to hold your mouse down, and then hit shift again, and you can snap. So you can kind of like pivot the view a bit. So if I grab it this way, so I was holding shift, right? Shift, start dragging, let go of shift, and then you can kind of pivot and then snap to kind of a, a, a back or, or with the object on its back. Okay, it's a little weird to work with, so that's a view adjustment. Sometimes your character is in an awkward pose as well, so what you may need to do is rotate. There is a rotate tool, so you can actually rotate the actual tool. Uh, you see it leaves behind separate sub tools, right? So all these little separate pieces that are here may be left behind. So uh, there's a little trick for this. If you need to move all the sub tools, you want to go to Z plugin, Z plugin, something called sub tool master. And then we can simply go to, uh, sorry, not Subtool Master, it's uh, Transpose Master. And what this will do is actually take all the separate subtools, combine them into one temporary mesh. And then if I need to rotate the whole thing, now it rotates it as if it were one object. Let's say I rotate it a bit further down like this. Go back to Z Plugin, and, and you'll go from Transpose Mesh, or T Pose Mesh for short, back to Subtools. So it should re-split all the subtools and put them in the right orientation. This is also very useful if you need to pose a character. Ah, this, this mesh had an error. So there, sometimes you do have errors. You do want to make sure none of your subtools are masked. That's uh, also very important for this. But I'll load a demo file to show you this. If I go to Demo Projects, Earthquake, for example. I think they call him Earthquake because he's a bit heavy, but... Uh, if you need to move, let's say, you know, he's got pants on top of skin, right? So there he is in the, in the nude. So yeah, if you ever need to like repose a character with complex layers of clothing and stuff, this is when we'd actually use this. We can go T-Pose Mesh. So again, it collapses everything down. Like I said, you want to make sure there's no bugs in the mesh or no masking. So now I can go to Rotate, and if I hold Control, um, or if I try to mask, you know, uh, Control, click and drag is your masking option, by the way. So I'll go in and, um, yeah, let's try masking. By the way, when you hold control, it actually activates a, uh, there is a, a masking brush in here. So there's mask, um, I think it's just mask pen. Where is it? Yeah, mask, mask pen right here. Uh, I actually prefer the mask lasso. So, um, and it'll tell you, if you switch between different types of masking brushes, it'll make that the new default masking brush mapping to the control key. So I'm going to say skip this because that's what I want. So now I can kind of try to go in and mask this, this part. So a lot of times I will start by masking the area I want to move. 
and then uh, demask the area I don't. So control alt is to subtract from a mask, by the way. So really, really powerful sort of functionality. If you control tap on a mask, it will blur it. If I control tap off the mask, it'll reverse it. And now I'll hold alt to reposition this sort of uh, quick pivot tool, and now I can start to rotate. So it's moving the pant leg, the boot, and the, the, the fleshy part underneath, right? Maybe I want to move it a bit further out. Uh, looks like I've got some area masked here, so I'm going to just remove that to make sure it's clean. So I can move this leg out a bit more. Um, so let's clear the mask. Control, click, and drag off the model. Control, click, and drag around the, the lower leg. Control, tap once. I usually like to blur my masks so I get a, a softer kind of transition. If I hold Alt with this rotate tool, I can reset that. And let's tap and move the mask. And now I can right bend the leg. So this is really, really great for posing. Clear the mask. Go in. Uh, go back. T pose mesh to subtool. So it actually will apply that change to all the separate layers. And you see it will update done right now sometimes you will have some some fixes to do maybe you have to adjust the you know the fatty leg underneath and adjust the knee or whatever but that's a great way to kind of repose a mesh that has complex subtools and layers to it okay